Welcome to Well Raised from Radio. I'm your host, Joshua Coburn, and with me, as always, is Savage Shane Scala. <laughs> thank, thank you. Very yeah, much. yeah. In keeping with the horror movie kind of vibes today, uh, Savage. Savage. I love it. Savage. Savage. You know, you got to have the metal grapefruit. If you guys look at enough metal he- grape heavy metal musicians, you'll see that they they palm the metal grapefruit. Check it out. You know, Savage. Is there a reason why it's a grape grapefruit? Because it's about that size. It's a big oh big fruit. All right. It's roughly yeah. about the size right. of a heart. Right. Metal metal grapefruit. <laughs> and slashing Simon Sandba. That's me. For show. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so today's guest is Jeremy Saffer. Um, he's a photographer, an elite photographer to all sorts of rock musicians and horror movie icons, which is, you know, lends itself to the sweet nicknames for today. Um, and those individuals include like New Year's Ash from New Year's Day and the band Bring Me the Horizon, uh, Candace, who we had on the show, and Walter Jericho, uh, Doyle from The Misfits, Robert England, who plays Freddy Krueger. Uh, we also talk about Doug Bradley and Hellraiser and um, really want to know, you know, what his story is, how he started. Is this, um, you know, I, I don't even want, I, w- I was the Misfit kid, but he was maybe the offbeat kid from his small town that, uh, Really came up through the ranks in rock photography, and now he's like a rock photography god. Mm-hmm. So check it out. This episode, Well Razor Radio, Jeremy Saffer starts right now. Jeremy, welcome to Well Razor Radio. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Excellent. So if you don't mind, we'll just jump right into uh, really what I want to know, because I feel like we have a lot in common in terms of like what we're into, you know, metal music, horror movies, et cetera, et cetera. Most people ask me, you know, was your childhood stable or were you totally off base or was it all jacked up? And truth is, it was uh, kind of normal for a while, then it got all jacked up. What about you? Did you feel like you have a normal kind of stable childhood? Was it a little crazy? No, I was completely normal. There was no, nothing bad at all. Normal parents, uh, middle class, you know. Nice. Uh, I had good amenities. I had a great education, supportive parents. and Awesome. Yeah, so, no issues. So not like the super like angsty teenage craziness like I had? <laughs> no, I mean, I went to, I lived in a three by three mile town. It was a very, very small town and it was very upper, upper middle class. And there was one metal goth kid in the entire high school <laughs> that was me oh but awesome I wasn't nice. ostracized for it i was genuinely accepted by everybody wow. you know i got into two fights in high school for the way i looked when i was a freshman and that's it everyone else immediately just accepted me for who i was and supported me so i had a really really good you know childhood and upbringing and school experience i would say most people that are involved in that dressing that way or into those kind of things would have kind of i mean i've heard of the opposite of that Right. So do you think it's a unique situation from where you lived and what you experienced, or is that just, what do you think that was about? Um, I think it was how I handled myself. I was well-read. I was pretty intelligent in any time I got into any sort of arguments about anything. And of course there were those people that judge you, but it's very easy to talk to them and explain your side of things and hopefully get them around to your way of thinking or to at least understand it. And, you know, there's a few people here and there that wouldn't but in general it was just you know okay he wears you know eyeliner and skirts whatever yeah that's honestly that's kind of how it was for me oddly enough because i grew up in a town of like three thousand. i was i had a leg sleeve when i was 16 because it was legal then you know i listened to like i mean marilyn manson was massive antichrist superstar just came out and then a couple of years later the columbine massacre happened and i remember on the wall in the school, there's a comic, and it had like a poster of Marilyn Manson on the wall in this kid's bedroom, and Helter Skelter on the on the bed, and like all these like metal CDs stacked up. And someone had wrote above it in permanent marker on the wall, and it said Josh Coburn's bedroom, like here. And you know what? They weren't wrong. But the difference was like I was well communicated, well read, just like you. Like when people asked me about that or what I thought of it, of course I thought it was horrific, and everybody misunderstood it, just missed the point of communication and that's what apparently you and i were both good at that's that's insane because you do you hear about complete opposite right. from most individuals that are For sure kind of into that vein of things hey jeremy i wanted to ask you uh right off the cuff i mean you are known for your pictures right you are known for being a badass photographer and i've started to dabble 
in photography. <laughs> I've <laughs> I've, right. dabbled. I, I've dabbled enough to know there's so much that I need to learn that um, I, looking at how I used to take pictures, I mean, everybody I know has a smartphone, right? Everybody's smartphone has a camera. Well, that and makes every- you a professional photographer, right? Right. An, isn't that the case? <laughs> right? <laughs> and everybody is taking these photos of everything in their life, and they don't realize how crappy of photos they are truly taking, right? They're taking a photo, and they're like, oh, I hope that's all right. But it doesn't turn out all right because they're not doing, like, the manual settings and stuff like that. Once I got my first DSLR, which is within the, what, last year, right? Right, yeah. I didn't even know what um, depth of field was, any of that stuff. Do you remember? I, I, I've, I've totally fallen into this uh, obsession with camera gear, <laughs> constantly wanting to buy the latest and greatest thing, um, not knowing what to buy, buying something and being disillusioned with it. Do you remember your first DSLR camera? Do you remember your first experience with a camera and thinking, yeah, I just captured like the perfect thing, the exact thing? that I wanted to capture, I captured. Do you remember that? Well, I started on film, to be honest. Digital kind of came out when I was already taking pictures. I mean, it it was starting when I was starting, essentially. So my first DSLR came along about four years after I started shooting shows. I started shooting shows on those 27 exposure disposable Kodak cameras. Wow, those what I really? I'd buy a five-pack of those. Awesome. That I would go to a show with. I went to Milwaukee Metal Fest with that. Like, Heck yeah. Good that's choice. Wow. <laughs> that's cool. I started knowing nothing, you know, and I just got there from figuring it out. And my first two cameras were actually Sony point-and-shoots. They were digital, but they weren't SLRs. Um, my first DSLR was a Canon 10D. And even when I got it, I didn't really know much. I, didn't kn- I shot on full auto. Right, I didn't know settings. Right. Um, I shot my first few festivals with that, um, and then I kind of learned as I went on about all the different settings. And I know a lot of people look down on people who are just getting into photography, people who aren't professional photographers, but they're proud of their work. And there's nothing wrong with that because people getting into it, that's awesome. That means there's going to be more artists. There's going to be more different views out there. There's going to be more photos, and that rules. Uh, I know a lot of people bash on that, but I think it's awesome. And in terms of art, in terms of what looks good, that's all in the eye of the beholder. Totally. You know, some people might look at a photo and think it's awful, while other people look at it and think it's awesome. I mean, Jackson Pollock exists. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so you don't have any like necessarily technical training in photography? Did you go to school? Did you oh. take classes? I mean, how how did you how did the, your kind of your education in photography kind of evolve? Well, what happened was I shot a lot of live shows, and that was like from 14 on I've been shooting concerts. And then I started touring a lot, and I went to Berklee School of Music and absolutely hated it. It was the worst thing ever, (laughs) and I would skip doing homework to shoot shows. And then it kind of turned out that I wanted to get into photography, and so I did that, and I went to the Hallmark Institute of Photography, which is kind of near where I live. And it was quick. It was 10 months. You know, it's kind of a, um, not a trade school, but like one of those quick programs that teaches you everything you need to know and gets you right back out there, which is what I wanted because I wanted to jump off tour, do school, jump right back out on tour. And that's exactly what I did. But then I kind of did less live and more portrait work. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how it's tilted in the last 10 years. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I actually just noticed that um, you you were you were doing some some shows recently, festival shows recently, and you know doing stuff, kind of you know from the crowd perspective. And I was like, I don't think I've ever seen any of that work from you. So that shows that I haven't been following you apparently <laughs> long enough. But what I wanted to mention was I think it's amazing you brought up the the like four pack of digital cameras because something that consistently comes up on this show is just taking action on what you love right. to ultimately become unbelievable at it, which you've obviously done. So I wanted to call that out once again, just kind of for, for, 
for the record. For some, there's, yeah. some, there's some consistency there that we, yeah. we've seen that for sure. You don't need to buy, you don't need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to start living your dream. Just grab stuff and get out there and start doing stuff. Get Taking dirty. that action, right? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everyone has to start somewhere. And I know, you know, it's kind of a faux pas. A lot of photographers like to look down on the people who are beginning, but they were all beginners at one point too. So, right. Yeah. Well, you know, that said, and we were talking just before the show started, like for me from the outside looking in, it, it appears that you kind of took your interests that you really dug and, you know, kind of inserted yourself somehow or another in the middle of it. Your thing that worked for you was photography. Is that kind of how it worked out for you or was it your intention? Like, you know, I'm going to take photos. I'm going to take photos of live shows. Ultimately, I want to get in with, you know, these musicians and, and horror movie stars, et cetera. Or was it just this steadily evolving thing? It sounds like it kind of was, was just evolving. Well, if you ask any music photographer, someone who shoots bands, why they get on, got into it, it's because they're a fan of music or a fan of those bands. Right. No one will say differently. No one chooses it as a career without being a fan of what they're <laughs> doing. Um, I wanted to be a musician, hence Berkeley School of Music, and I was in bands at the time. But um, really, I started shooting shows to get as close to the bands as possible. So, you know, I, I would take pictures from the crowd when I was younger, and I'm like, you know what? I can get up there and take pictures. I need to find out how to do that, because if I get a picture of, you know, Danny Filth or Metallica from this angle, holy shit, that's going to be the coolest thing I could possibly have to remember this concert by. Right, and, and I can share it with other people, and it kind of went from there. So, so that said, when you, I mean, like that's it's it's funny because a lot of kids think it's you know impossible to get you know close to those individuals. All it takes is a piece of fairly flimsy plastic with some artwork on it, right? That says press or you know media or you know VIP or whatever it says. When you started looking into that, I mean, was it a difficult process for you? you just start asking around at shows. How did you go about it? Well, when I got into it, it was a different time than now. Right. So things are very different now. But what I did was I started a website, which was essentially a fanzine or a webzine, as sure. they're now called. And it was reviews, interviews, live photos, and that was my end to a lot of shows. But I also became the house photographer for a venue. And then awesome. once I became the house photographer for that venue, I was able to shoot any show that went there. Very cool. So that kind of helped me out a lot and, you know, moved me along. And then you, you have to build those relationships with the people that you're taking photos of. And, and like I said, I just started messing around with cameras recently. <clears throat> but how, how did you, like, what was your first experience with, a, with a, a band or a star that, like, really made you nervous and you had to direct them? Because you're taking the photos and you got to adjust people this way or that. Like what was that what was that first band that really made you think, "Oh shit. Like I'm in this and I can't believe I'm here right now." Honestly, I can't remember. I know my first photo shoots, like the first 5 were Lacuna Coil Bleeding Through Slayer, um A Perfect Murder and A Life Once Lost, and I know all of them I was kind of cool with and I didn't have any feeling of you know, oh my God, what's going to happen or any nervousness because it was very laid back. It was a very laid back photo shoot. Uh, Slayer a little more intense because they're a higher profile band. But, you know, even then I was fine with it and I wasn't really posing them. I was just kind of taking pictures at that point because I didn't really know much of what I was doing, but I was already working for a magazine and getting good photos because I knew how to get the exposure. Um... Well, I don't really get in a lot of situations where I'm nervous. There's a lot of situations where I kind of like, I don't know if a shoot's going to happen, if it's going to go well, if it's going to be bad. And, and those would make me nervous, but the actual band will never make me nervous. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. So, if, you, if you, obviously, I mean, I've been on your website and your, the galleries are amazing. Uh, the covers are, are awesome. I'm just wondering, is there anything that we would be surprised to know that you shoot outside of the bands and outside of uh you know metal metal music i mean are daisies your favorite flower and once in a while you take a snapshot of that or what are some things you might be surprised that you actually do just for things that you like outside of just music 
Um, in terms of photography, pretty much everything I shoot goes online or is pretty much out there. So there's nothing that's really that that I've really photographed that's a surprise. I, d- I don't like still life photography. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think taking a picture of what's in front of you with the lighting that's already there is a given talent to a certain extent. I think it's just cool. That's what's there. Just like shooting a show like Warp Tour. You're shooting outside in natural light amongst 30 other photographers getting the same shot. And it's like, cool, you're going to have different crops, different focuses, slightly different exposures, but essentially you're all getting the same thing. Just like if you lined up 30 photographers to take a picture of a waterfall, you're going to get 30 different photos of the same thing that look kind of similar. Gotcha. So that's why portraits are my main thing. And I'm kind of a control freak in terms of posing, lighting, and all that. So so that said, what in your eyes, I'll tell you what I think, but what in your eyes sets you apart from all the thousands of other photographers? And trust me, like I'm a huge music fan, so I've always looked through, you know, liner notes of all the greatest bands to see, like, oh my God, Ross Halfin, you know, shot that or whoever. So, how do you think, you know, or what do you think sets you apart from like other rock photographers or photographers in general? I honestly don't know. I don't think that would be for me to say. I think that would be for other people to say. Just like. You know, I would never call myself an artist, and I will never say what I do is art. I would leave that to other people to decide because that's kind of their uh, anybody else's choice to make and and whatnot. Nice. I don't have a sword, but I would bestow that upon you. <laughs> yeah, that you're definitely an artist. You are you know an artist. What I mean, yeah. for sure. But honestly, like the, when I first kind of saw your your artwork, if now I can say that. Um, I noticed that I felt like I could like walk into your photos. Does that make sense? Like I felt like I could just walk into them, walk around the individuals. It was very three dimensional. The way the lighting was, it separated everyone. Even if you had five people in a photo, like it looked like you shot, and maybe you did, uh, shot them all individually. You know, it was unbelievable. I felt like I could just jump in there and hang out with everybody. That's what set it apart for me. Um, and we were talking lighting a little earlier. I mean. Right. What do you do different? What you know? How do you set up? Do you do anything completely consciously when it comes to that? I mean, not really. I just kind of take the artist, figure out what's going to look good for them in the setting that we have to work with. Because you know, sometimes you're in a you know ten foot by ten foot dressing room. Sometimes you have a whole venue or a studio, so it's always different, and it will be lit differently according to what you have to work with. But there's nothing really conscious in terms of specific lighting that I do for everything because everything's a little bit different. Things need to be moved around, even depending on the height of the band. If there's someone who's super tall, super short, you know, it's always different. But the bottom line is to make them look good, to make everything cohesive, to make them either separate completely from the background or make them part of the background so it's a full scene. Are, Definitely. Are, do you ever get how should I put this? The people that you take photos of, I was watching some, I was watching a video on your webs on um, YouTube about a photo shoot behind the scenes that you were putting on. And everyone that you were taking photos of, the band members were like, you'd show them the photos and they all were very amazed. They were all very happy with the photos that you were taking. Does it ever shock you because right now you see, you seem very humble you seem very like ah this it, it doesn't really shock me too much i, I just uh, shoot some of the greatest rock yeah, photography just, on earth yeah, no, big deal. No, big, no big deal you see yeah you seem very relaxed about the whole thing but the reality is you're able to capture manipulate reality with current technology and that blows the normal person away when you take somebody's photo in an alley with the proper lighting, the proper settings, your ISO, your exposure, all this stuff, different stuff, the proper lens, and you take somebody who's dressed up, a band member, whatever, they have a certain image, they have a certain emotion, they, they're trying to give off this certain theme, and you're actually able to capture that feeling. Does that, does that still blow you away? Or do you just feed off of your the people that you're taking photos of? I mean, it works both ways. There's sometimes where I'll take a photo and I'll look at the back of the camera, you know, test shot or 
you know, just checking, making sure everything's going right. And I'll be super stoked on it right away because I'll know I'm getting exactly what I want to get or something I haven't gotten before or just exactly what I need and want. Um, but it also rules to show someone the photos as you're taking them because they can also give you direction in terms of, oh, we don't really like that, we like that, or they're just completely blown away and they get more into the photo shoot and it's a complete icebreaker. Like um, there's this black metal band, Watain from uh, Sweden. Amazing. And they, I, I had a photo shoot with them and they didn't want to shoot in their makeup and I only wanted to shoot them in their makeup because <laughs> shooting them with their vests and the kind of like – Ramones kind of feel that they wanted to go for was cool, but it wasn't Watain and what they're known for. So after I showed them the back of camera shot of them, you know, in their regular gear, not in makeup, they said, you know what, we will do the shoot with you in the makeup. And, you know, we were able to do it because they were impressed with the back of camera photo. So sometimes it can help propel the shoot to the next level for sure. That's pretty amazing. Awesome. Is there anything about the technology that's coming out today? Like it can, uh, cameras have much greater processors, uh, higher, uh, larger sensors, uh, more unbelievable lenses, uh, ISO settings that are getting way up there that you can take amazing pictures at night. Is there anything that's kind of dumbing it down? I mean, I, you had made a comment earlier about it's awesome. Anybody taking a photo. I love new photographers coming into the the scene and and creating art. But is there? Do you miss a little bit of the old school photography where you really had to be this technician to pull off an amazing shot? Or for that matter, does it push you harder to work for something more cool and you know push that that envelope farther? I think when I first started and digital first came out, there was the argument that digital will never be better than film. And as we've seen, you know, 10 years later, okay, film is nothing now. <laughs> so right. digital has far surpassed film. And there, the, the target audience for camera consumers are not professionals. They're, you know, prosumers. Right. People who will uh -huh. buy... A, a mid to high level DSLR to take family portraits to follow their hobbies. That's where their money is. So it's always going to get to the point where technology makes it easier and easier for people to take better and better photos easier and easier. And there's nothing wrong with that. That rules. Images looking better is a good thing. You know, that rules. Um, in terms of what I do, I don't think there's any technology that hurts or in in any negative way it just gets better and better with new lightroom with new editing software new cameras new lenses new lighting it just gets better and better and there's so much more you can do but that also means there's you know a lot to learn right nice. right so yeah. so it sounds like someone's got a better uh, more positive <laughs> outlook than mr <clears throat> Shane Scala over here, Jim Mr. Gloom. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Debbie Downer. Yeah. Well, I was to say uh, while while Shane's geeking out on this this technology, uh, I love this. this. this I love this. Jeremy, I could hang out with you. And, <laughs> and I no I noticed that you were looking for an assistant. And brother, if I lived on the East Coast, <laughs> I, I I would be all over you. <laughs> You're making it awkward. So yeah, it's changed uh, things. This awesome. Come on out sometime. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I had a question from a fan on Twitter at Benjamin AVS. Uh, this kind of goes along with what you've been talking about. Maybe you've hit on some of these things. How did you decide on the deep silver reflective umbrella as a modifier for your on lo location portrait shoots? I don't have a deep silvery umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Awesome. Obviously, Benjamin is a little I, off. It's okay, though. I'm, I'm going to assume they mean the, the Rhyme Light -like Grand Box, which is okay. a kind of like an Octo Box, which is an eight-sided box, but it's 16 because it's a Grand Box. So it's 16-sided oh. and very deep. Um, the best thing about that is it's a single light, and I can shoot a band of six, seven, eight people with a single light modifier and throw light on them and around them. Wow. So any of those shots you see where you see someone on a background and it looks like there's a light behind them and there's light on them and heavy fall off on the sides, it's that modifier. That's, so with that whoa. one single light, you get essentially four lights in one, which is amazing. That That is amazing, honestly. Like, yeah, that's cool. Uh, 
my statement before we started the show is I will get out there and I will work with you at some point. So, you know, <laughs> it's now in the universe and I will eventually get out there to, to make that happen because I want that. That is so cool. Is I love really that. Neat. Yeah. Amazing. So it yeah, works for sure. It's awesome. Definitely. So in, in keeping with the fan questions, because we did, uh, did ask that uh, along the, uh, the internets, um, yep. tradition dot child or tradition, excuse me. Wow, that's a cool name. Tradition, tradition dot child <laughs> asks, who's your favorite artist or band to work with and why? And the reason I ask that is because I know that's a really tough question. Well, I'm pretty it's interested not. Here. It's actually a really easy question. Really? Oh, get asked every day, honestly. <laughs> Honest? Oh, wow, that's awesome. I would have figured, like, I, I'm glad you're not going the politically correct route. Yeah. No, no, I have an answer for that. And Let's it's hear a very it. easy answer. It's the people I work with the most. And that's why I work with them so much because I love working with them. So people like Ash Ghost, Christina, you know, Elisa, Doyle, Chris, you know, the people I just continue working with over and over and over again. Those are the ones I like working with the most, and that's why I work with them so much. That's great. Yeah, we were talking about Doyle earlier because, um, I mean, dude is just huge and ripped and a legend. And, like, what a better subject. I mean, if, especially, like, from a lighting standpoint alone, dude's got, like, ripples all over, man. You can make that well, the cool, What I was telling Josh, what I liked about it was that I, he just looks like such a badass in those pictures. And he's so shredded, and the guitar is so wicked looking. And then... I see a few pictures pass of him with a big bubble from bubble gum and his girlfriend or wife who's got, you know, awesome right, bright so, yeah. hair and it looks it's so contradictory to the picture that I saw before because before I thought, "Oh my god, this guy would be like the greatest bodyguard or Conan the Barbarian sidekick ever." And then he's got the bubble gum and it looks like he's a very fun guy on top of that. So this is why I should say is the, the first photographs portrayed him a certain way. The other photograph portrayed him differently. And I kind of like that dichotomy that you kind of created there. Well, the bubble gum is actually part of the original misfits. He's been doing that since day one of the misfits. That's his thing. That's what he does on stage. Okay. So that has a, 30 something year history at least gotcha right <laughs> sorry <laughs> i always feel bad in these situations i'm so out of, i'm so out of the loop it's yeah, not even josh funny. Is, josh is, is definitely that's his thing just like king diamonds would be his uh cross microphone stand that right. he carries around um yeah that that's what he's been doing on stage since the beginning which, uh, if if I could totally nerd out for a second, like how crazy is it that the original Misfits are hitting up Riot Fest? Are you totally flying out to Chicago for that? Because I would do anything for that. Um, I'm not sure yet. I mean, it's in September, so we got a little bit of time. But, you know, fingers crossed on a few things happening. We'll see what happens. Amazing. But. Amazing. That's, that's going to be legendary. Even if they only pull off those two shows, like that's a win all the way around. Absolutely. All right, Jeremy, I got another question for you. Uh, this is from Vile Kitte. <laughs> Kitte. Yeah, yeah K I T T E H. Kitte. <laughs> Hello. I've been a huge fan for years, and thank you for being a massive inspiration to myself and others. If you could give everyone one piece of advice to take their photography or uh, from hobby to professional, what would that be? Just not to give up. I see so many photographers who are trying to make it and they get disheartened and then they give up and go into something else. And, you know, it is a battle, but if you, I mean, if I can do this, anyone can do this. It's easy. It's that. That's all it is. <laughs> right, anyone right. Do that. And a 16 sided, you know, reflective, with, with, reflective yeah. thing with one light. Yeah. It doesn't right. hurt the cause, but <laughs> yeah, certainly anyone can do this. And the only way to fail is to give up. Right. That's the only way you can fail. All right, and then as a backup question, if you could shoot anyone, alive or dead, who would it be and why? This is another one of those daily questions. Um, If I could do a portrait session with Michael Jackson, that would probably be the best one for me because that's what I grew up on. Um, Awesome. You know, and there's a lot of people who passed that I really wanted to work with, and I got to shoot them live, but I never got to do a portrait session with them, which is, you know, a very different thing. But like Dio, Peter Steele... Uh. And the list goes on and on. Uh, Peter Steele, man, that would be that's freaking legendary. I don't know if you guys know who he is, but that was my very first uh, second show, and to see his like 
massive stature in front of you know that microphone the dude the roadie was like reaching above his head to set the microphone and i was just like is this guy really that big fact is yes he was really that big damn he was huge he's a big guy so so do you do do you do uh workshops and seminars and things like that because i i i don't know if you can tell i have (laughs) i'm wearing this shirt do you know fro fro nose photos I do not. Oh, that damn. Makes, that He's, probably makes you actually less cool because it, he doesn't it might, know. Yeah, for sure. I'm positive that it does. Go ahead. You're positive. All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> Jeremy, for, for a novice like myself, to in today's age, and you didn't have this, but in today's age, when you want to learn a skill, I got YouTube, right? Yeah. yeah and, and so under, understanding... Uh, going into manual mode and getting away from the auto settings and and trying to understand depth of field and the different lenses and what you're trying to go for and the different type of looks that you're you're looking at and and the 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 cool technology that is in a lot of the modern prosumer uh, DSLRs nowadays. I mean, it's almost like if if you can just take the have the patience to read the manual and they say if you're going to take a night shot. Put it on this setting, and then it'll adjust the camera for you. But I'm also able to go on YouTube and learn stuff from all these different photographers. So if you're doing seminars and workshops, how do people get a hold of you to do that? And then, like, what do you go over in those? I mean, when I do them, I post about them. I do sometimes two a year, sometimes one a year either in Los Angeles or at my studio in Mass, and um, go over everything. Um, it, it's called the business of music photography, and, and I get into you know, a lighting tutorial. I have a guest band come in like Chris or New Year's Day or um, Monty Pittman from Madonna has been a guest. Um, and I'll do a photo shoot with them, and then the kids will take over and do – photo shoots with the bands using my lighting that they just learned how to use. And then I go over the business of everything, like how to get into it, how to get your photo passes, uh, how to make money selling photos, where to sell them, how to market yourself, a whole lot of everything. So I go over the technical aspects, but I also go over the business aspects, which I think is what the schools don't have and what you can't learn on YouTube. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's amazing. I mean, I, I speak in high schools and stuff, and I see – that I see the lack of kind of information that is get, like applicable real life information. You, Simon Simon works in a high school, so or a, a school, school system. School system yeah. So yeah. so you know it's 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 interesting to hear you say that you know they don't teach the business side of it. They just teach you know the technical side. It's so true, mm-hmm. crazy. Sure, yeah. I also just took the note or made a note on my paper that just simply says go. Because the next one that you have, I may show up at. Because that <laughs> oh, seems, go to the photography. Yeah, absolutely, summer? absolutely. Can you and I both go? Totally, we should make that when happen. Is, when's your next one? Um, it's not in the books yet. I just did one. Uh, I want to say April. I might do one in the fall, depending on my schedule. The thing that's tough about them is I have to book them at least two to three months in advance. But I don't always know what my schedule is going to be three months in advance. So sometimes I have to move them around. Like um, the last one I did, I announced it. And the day after Fear Factory announced the date of their show being the same day as my seminar. So I was like, oh, got to miss Fear Factory. Uh." (laughs) (laughs) Or you could have made everyone else just go to Fear Factory with you, right? (laughs) Yeah, there you go. (laughs) I'd be down with that. We have done some where the seminar ended with going to a concert and all the kids get to shoot the concert. Oh, shit. That That would be amazing. I don't know if it's kids, but... (laughs) Well, I, I love the fact that uh, another common theme we, we see is the giving back. Like, you're not afraid to teach all these new up-and-comers exactly what you do. That's mm-hmm. amazing. And honestly, something that I feel like a lot of people are, like, hoarding their secrets, you know, back in the day. That's, that's totally a well razorish thing to do, you know, the, the right. giving. That's so amazing. I love it. So well, Yeah, I've certainly been um, approached by other photographers that are like, why are you teaching people this? This is how you make money. And I just don't look at other photographers as competition. And it's really cool. Like, a lot of my ex-seminar attendees, one's on work tour this year as a photographer – um, another is Diplo's tour manager, awesome. which is awesome um, and massive. Uh, 
Another one's a well-known wedding photographer. Actually, three are. Um, awesome. Another one's a tour photographer. You know, it's a lot get to um, – a bunch have been published in alternative press and different magazines. Another one used to run Hales and Horns and now runs uh, oh, wow. some other magazine. Or New Noise. He was working for New Noise. Now he does digital tour bus. Uh-huh. Awesome. Um, yeah, so it's all over the place. Well, that, that goes back to what you were talking about before, though, which is like – it gives people an opportunity to put more of their art out there. And you want to see more art, period. I would love to see more art. And so you're just inspiring more artists to get the thing that you really want in the long run. Well, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're going to your, if they're going right. to your class, I'm going to assume they have an edge. So I'll just put that. I, I would definitely agree with that. Have you ever thought about kind of taking these seminars on tour? You know, like starting in mass, you know, hitting – you know, Memphis, then Chicago, Detroit, Minneapolis, Des Moines, Cedar Rapids, Cedar Rapids, saying, Iowa. You know, Omaha, <laughs> and then like you know, heading to the other coast. I mean, is that ever kind There's of? There's a lot up? of things that have been talked about, such as seminar and photo shoot tours that just haven't happened because of other things I have going on. Sure. Sure. In yep. an ideal world where I can split myself into 25 people, you know, I could have someone editing all day, someone exercising for me all day. Uh, <laughs> I, I love that. One person and it'll work out. But I wish I could do a cross country trip just doing seminars and photo shoots. It's just my schedule is too hectic to, you know, put away two to four weeks to make that happen, to schedule it and all that. Right. But, you know, well, you know a, a kind of a common theme on this show that we talk about is having a spotter, right? Uh, somebody who is there to help you out. And, uh, you know, for some of our last guests, it was, you know, helping with their kids or helping with support, emotional support, uh, any kind of support. That's what a spotter is for. Like, who is your spotter or who do you kind of look to to help you Stay focused because, like what you just said, you have a lot of stuff going on and your schedule is crazy. Like, who, who helps you get through all that? Well, there's a lot of people, honestly. Um, I mean, I have Christine, who is my main assistant. She runs my store, deals with my shipments, deals with all that, and she's the other half of my brain. I like, she knows my life better than anyone, so I'll bounce ideas off of her, and she'll definitely tell me if something's a terrible idea or not. <laughs> Usually it is. but <laughs> <laughs> You can't beat people like that. You need them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, you know, everybody, like, even hitting up friends and being like, hey, should I do this? Should I not do this? Or, you know, telling them what's going on in my life and sharing stories, that kind of keeps me going. Uh, I'm just very ADD. I'm very hard to concentrate on one thing. I like doing 75 things at once. So right. <laughs> that, nice. But. Because no matter how amazing anybody is at any one task, there there's always somebody in the background helping them. You know, there's always there's there's always somebody giving some type of guidance, some type of support, and uh, I think we forget about that when we see an exceptional person doing an exceptional thing. And you have the normal people sitting back here observing you going, I could never do that. I could never do that by myself. Look at all what he's doing. I could never do that. Well, you're not doing all that all by yourself. You have your spotters. And it's great that um, everybody can kind of focus and identify who is actually making this all a reality. Sure. So, give that shout out for sure. Yeah. Yeah, those people matter, definitely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, if you don't mind, and, and uh, I hope it's okay to bring this up. I know we, we talked via email briefly about it to shift gears a little bit. And by the way, speaking of you needing 25 of you or whatever, um, you were awesome to deal with as far as getting on the show. You were very communicative, and I appreciate that, so thank you. Um, <laughs> Thanks for having me. What's that? Thanks for having me. I appreciate Heck yeah, it. are you kidding? This is great. Awesome. I'm like nerding out this whole time. I'm really trying to keep my fangirl fangirling to like minimum. <laughs> um, but that said, uh, something that was kind of brought up was, and maybe very few people know, is that you you were kind of battling diabetes for a little while, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. But um, basically, I was very very unhealthy in terms of food and drinking way too much soda, and my sight. I had an issue with my sight and, you know, doctors couldn't figure it out. 
And one doctor said it might be diabetes, and then another doctor said it's definitely not that. And then I saw a third doctor, and they said, yeah, you have diabetes. So they basically gave me three months to kind of get it under control before I was put on medication that would have really, really bad side effects that I didn't want to have. And so I immediately cut out soda, changed my diet, and started uh, walking every single day, which now I'm running. Awesome. Um, but yeah, and one month I got my blood sugar to a normal level so in three months when I had my checkup I wasn't put on medication you know things were going good and I lost a hundred pounds last year oh my wow. god yeah, yeah that god. was good and um this winter I fell <laughs> so off nonchalant the man like that is huge that's like <laughs> yeah. that is huge man yeah I, mean, like, I, yeah, I lost deal. 100 pounds and be down. awesome yeah. sorry i didn't mean to interrupt like <laughs> yeah, i no, gotta good. call that out man that's that's matt for for anyone listening to this show that is struggling with anything on earth that should be an inspiration that yes you can do it i mean in a year 100 pounds in a year that's amazing. mind blown yeah, it was in um it was from march to like october unbelievable wow and now and you attribute that all to Cutting out all your soda and st- and walking and just starting to be a little bit more active. Well, yeah. Well, basically, I changed my schedule completely. Um, I walked every day, no matter what, and my work suffered, and I didn't care. I've never put my health before anything. I would shoot a show sick. I would go do photo shoots when I was sick as can be. Right. I didn't care. I just wanted to get my job done. I was very much my job is everything. Um, for the first time ever, I put my health first and my job kind of, you know, I'm still behind now. It is what it is, but, um, I had to put my health first when it was, you know, life threatening essentially. Yeah. Um, so just starting to walk every day, um, I ate the same thing for like five months <laughs> and that helped shred everything. <laughs> and, and what was that that you ate? You brought it up. You got to tell us. Oh, they, a lot of good advice from Doyle and Elisa for sure. Hey, um, awesome. Vegan, vegan food? No, no, no. Um, the Doyle's contribute uh, contribution to that was he has oatmeal every day for breakfast. Awesome. So I started eating oatmeal every day for breakfast. It was oatmeal sprinkled with cinnamon, so I had some flavor. Sure. I would do my walk, get in, and then for lunch I would either have a um, you know those little tuna packets. Yeah. They're just yeah. like deli tuna. Uh-huh. I'd either eat two of those in a wrap or one of those cans of chicken where you have to dump the water. Uh, I'd eat one of those for lunch, and then for dinner, I would always have grilled chicken with sautéed veggies, and that was my meal, and I lost, you know, at least a pound a day, essentially, if not uh, more. But that that then, sounds... you know, I would do my cheat day every now and again, right, where I sure. ate, went out, eat pizza, eat wings, whatever, and I would gain eight pounds that day. <laughs> right. Then, no, 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 literally, every single time, eight Absolutely. pounds, minimally. And then I, after three or four days, it's gone back to normal, and you know. Right. No, I like I took notes on your your food specifically because, like, my wife just finished some fitness competitions, and mm-hmm. like your your mention of like gaining literally eight pounds on a cheat day, that's what she does. It's amazing. Yeah. And then three days later, she's like, "Yeah, I'm down four pounds from what I was last week." I'm like, "How is that possible?" <laughs> you know, but it's it is. It's really all what you eat. Like, right. it's insane. Oh, absolutely. If you do something that's carb deficient. You know, where you're taking away carbs and then all of a sudden you have an influx of carbs, your body's like, I want to hold on to these as long as I possibly can. Right. So it immediately blows up and then you get rid of them. So did you learn a ton about nutrition then through this process or did you always know? I'm an idiot when it comes to that stuff. I just know what works for me. (laughs) Oh, awesome. Good enough. But you're feeling great now. Well, this winter I kind of hit a really hard low and started eating like crap and I'm just now in summer, you know, I'm working out harder than I ever had, but I gained 30 pounds or so over the winter because I wasn't eating well. And I'm still kind of struggling with that now that I wasn't like last year, I wasn't struggling with it. I was fine on the diet Mm -hmm. this year, not so much, but, um, I'm getting back to it now. So nice. Hopefully I'll lose all that. It's good to acknowledge kind of the ebb and flow of that. I think a lot of people think that, you know, it's just like once you hit a certain kind of level, you have to be perfect. And if you fall off the wagon a little bit, they get so down and slip into old habits and it's just a mess for a long time. But it's great to hear that, you know, your honesty that, you know, it's still a struggle sometimes. That's, that's pretty oh, huge absolutely. to acknowledge. I mean, it, for me, it's, it's about time. And I don't have a lot of it because of how 
poorly I schedule my days. But, um, <laughs> you know, if, if it's, okay, I have to spend one hour cooking this meal or I can take 10 seconds to order a pizza with two buttons and then pay for it and eat it while I'm working until it gets here, eat it real quick, go back to work, that's easier for me. So right. every now and again I make terrible decisions, but I'm, I'm trying to get back to it, trying to get back to cooking more. and it, It's a battle, but I'm doing better now than I was you know, last month. So that's and, awesome. And it's always going to be a battle. It, oh, yeah, for, of course. For, for how easy it is to have terrible food because yeah. I, I, I love my terrible food. That's why apparently. it's called convenience it's food, convenience, right? Yeah. Convenience yeah. store, <laughs> can, you know, I mean. drive through yeah. order, exactly. yeah, the speed dial. Yeah. I'm going to switch gears really pizza. quick because I, I, I really was taken aback by your photography on your website. And I it, it really struck me how each person you were shooting, you could really capture who they were in those shots. At the same time, there was a kind of a theme with your the way you shoot, or I, I, I assume so because I'm not as well versed as Shane in, as in, is in this. But I mean, they have kind of like this. I, I put it. I wrote it down in my notes, kind of like this special glow, almost like I, I attribute it to like the vampires in Twilight. Like they have like this really sharp <laughs> a glitter, but, a glitter, beautiful. I mean, I mean, they're really all really beautiful pictures, and there's something very different about. Almost about as if them. there's a trans, uh, like a luminescence coming out from within. There you go. Right? Yeah, and so I'm, I'm wondering, is is that something special that you do? That you've got a, a thing that you found kind of a niche in that you really use because it really brings out what you're looking for in those shots? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, awesome! I'm just letting you know your art works for me, buddy. There you go. Right, and you know it's it's funny you bring that up because, like I said, you know, for me to look at your stuff, like if somebody showed me like laid out 50 photos. I could pick yours out before I could pick out any other photographer. And it's because of that. Yeah. Exactly. So it's pretty amazing. You're like, I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> but I you're mean, doing I, it. Do right. you think? Well, you know what? People say that they can pick out my photos. They know what photos are mine. And I don't understand. Like, like I, I asked them to explain it to me. And they're like, I can't explain it really. It's this. It's, it's the eyes. It's the lighting. It's the posing. It's the, you know, it's always something different. It's not something mm-hmm. like consistent. Mm-hmm. So they all always have different answers. So I, I guess that's kind of good that there's not one thing that defines me. Right. Sure. But well, I'm, I mean, I just do what I do and it is what it is. Well, Jeremy, let me ask you this. What do you, what would you suggest or what advice would you give somebody who's starting out in photography? Is it more about the quality of the initial shot or oh, is yeah. it more about the understanding and the educating of yourself with, software with like Adobe Lightroom and things like that. It's definitely both, but here's the thing. And and the way I was taught was to get it right in camera cuz every minute you're spending editing, you're not shooting. Mm. And generally photographers get paid for photo shoots, not for editing. Right. So business-wise, it's bad to spend all your time editing. Time-wise, it's bad to spend all your time editing, but we all do it anyway. It's what happens. But um if you can look at a photo you like, you go, okay, I like this photo. I like how it was done. The best thing you can do is dissect the photo, kind of figure out where the lighting is, how they made it happen, and then try to recreate it yourself using lighting rather than using Photoshop. Because then you can learn, okay, this is how they did this. Like, I'll look at a photo I like and I'll try to figure out how it's done. And if I can do it with lighting, I'll do it with lighting. Right. If I have to use Photoshop, I won't be so stoked to do it because I'm not in com- a composite person at all. I don't do composite work, and I hate editing. <laughs> it's such a task, to say the least. And um, you know, I want it to look the way I want it to look, but the important thing is to get it right in camera so you don't have to do a lot of editing. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, this we didn't talk about this earlier. I'm sorry. I'm just throwing this out there mm-hmm. on you guys. But Jeremy, if if somebody had five grand, right? right. Starting out, they they think that their passion is photography. They got five thousand dollars. What equipment would you suggest they get on a budget to kind of get out there and and kind of doing what you're doing? He's pretty, he's got a five grand budget. Well, the, <laughs> the most important thing to go with that is what they want to shoot. If they want to shoot outdoors portraits, they don't need a lighting kit. If they want to shoot outdoor 
you know, outdoors, still life outdoors, nature photos. They just need a camera and a lens. So it's all very, you know, dependent on what they want to photograph. And the equipment should reflect that. You know, if you want to do portraits in studio, you're going to need lighting. You're going to need a couple different lenses. If you want to do, you know, lighting outdoors, you're going to need a light kit that can be, you know, battery powered. So, yeah, it's there's not one blanket answer for that, unfortunately. And is it better to spend your money on glass, your lenses, or is it better to spend your money on a really good quality DSLR camera? Or how about education? Would that be a better thing to spend your money on? Yeah. To know what you need to buy. Yeah, well, Education is very good. Um, in terms of body versus glass, it's kind of a little bit of both. Your body is only as good as your glass, which is only as good as your body. So... Damn, it. that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you could have the best lens ever on the worst camera, and you still have the worst camera. You can have the best camera ever on the worst lens, and you're kind of still in the same position. I see. All right. Makes sense. So it's right. kind of both. That makes sense. Totally. So, <laughs> <laughs> so normally about this time, we're kind of winding down a bit uh, toward the end of the show, and I always do what is known as the Fast Five, with you, I'm not going to lie, it's um, it's kind of going to be more like the Fast 8 because I did okay. what you do. Um, so what that is is essentially I'm going to ask you eight-ish questions at this point, and um, we usually expect kind of a, a quick snapback answer if you're cool with that, just kind of whatever's off the top of your head. I'll do the best I can. All right, new bands for us metal fans that we need to be listening to right now. Thank you, Scientist. Thank Amazing you, scientist. Band. Wow, that is not what I expected. And I haven't even heard of them, so that that's saying something. Any horror films you're looking forward to? New ones? Um, I can't even think off the top of my head what's coming out. Um, there's a lot of remakes, and I'm not too stoked on remakes. Yeah, I'm either. more stoked on the new Transformers movie than anything else. Well, all right, what they was the, what was your last what was your last favorite horror movie that you watched? Not really a horror movie, but incredible movie, and there is some horror in it. It's called Kill Your Friends. I watched it, uh, I want to say, two days ago. It's incredible. It's um, Imagine American Psycho, but for the music industry. Whoa, that's so interesting. It is one of the best movies I've seen in a long time. Wow, all right. I'll just check Kill it out. Friends, and it's uh, Nicholas Holt, the dude from uh, Mad Max, and um, the dude from Deadpool, Francis. He's in it, too. It's really, really good. Awesome. And James Coburn, the dude who does... Uh, Carpool karaoke, those nice. videos. He's yeah, I can really. Well, it's incredible, incredible movie. I have to check it out. Wow, yeah, excellent. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of taken aback by the name of that. That's intense. Awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, it's incredible. You know, I'm like, I have a movie problem. I have like four thousand DVDs. So. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be the same. I purged them all for the thought that oh, I'll just go digital. I lied to myself. I'm rebuying all of them. It's terrible. I, I, <laughs> I sold Chopping Mall, and I miss it every day. Chopping Mall. Chopping awesome. Mall. Like the best. You know what I'm talking about, right? You ever seen that? Oh, yeah, Jeremy? of course. Yeah, of course. Of course, of course. Of course. Yes. See? This yeah, is- I ask a question. I ask him a question. He's like, well, both. Well, shit. Yeah. You ask him a question. Well, of course I have. Yeah, see? That's <laughs> Absolutely. A- Chopping Mall. Horror movie nerds <laughs> unite. <laughs> you can't beat it. Go find it if you can. Um, so who have you yet to shoot? that is on your photography list? Um, yeah, I mean, I keep a bucket list. Uh, I would say Ozzy, Henry Rollins, Elvira, those are, those are up there for sure. Wow. Um, I was lucky enough that I got to take two bands off my bucket list earlier this year and throw them into the uh, achievement list, uh, Abbott from Immortal and Baby Metal. Wow, well, Baby Metal, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, How sure. was that? I mean, you know, th- they get kind of a bad rap in, in America. Europe loves them. But how was it shooting them? Probably pretty amazing. I mean, they're it was also, I mean, they don't speak English. They, they had a translator there to help tell them, you know, chin up, chin down. It was a very, very quick photo shoot. It was like maybe five minutes at the absolute most. Right. Oh. Super quick, but it went well, and the photos look awesome. Kick ass. I'm jealous. Yeah. Gosh. Immortal. We were talking about black metal just before, because uh, because we were talking about your your corpse paint project. So you know, I had to educate these gentlemen on black metal for for a moment. Yep, and Immortal's the best. At the heart of winter, get that album and listen <sighs> to it. Yes, it's actually the only Immortal <laughs> album I have. So uh, you know, not true. Uh, what was it? Under the like, Great Northern Skies or something? Lays in the Northern Sky, which is the best Thank Death you. Throne album. That's right. 
gosh, I'm showing my ignorance here. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, so, black and white or color photography? Uh, color for sure, because black and white you can't really add color to with it looking great. I mean, I guess you can try and you can, which is an old school technique, but color you can always convert to black and white. Perfect. Well done. All right. So, metal horns or metal fist? All about the horns, huh? Oh, yeah. Wow. I wouldn't have guessed. I'm a metal fist guy. Metal fist? So I'm, a, I'm a fist guy. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I think it's because I'm, I'm a big hardcore music guy, so like it's kind of, gotcha. you know, crossover. See, I, I come from the house of Dio, so. Ah, uh, you know. So, so you have, in fact, ridden the tiger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're just, we're just gonna not. sit over here and be yeah. very very quiet yeah. just so you Simon, know Simon and I are like alright I'm taking it all in it's a learning experience yeah, it's for always, us always with Josh it's a learning uh, experience did, did you ever have a chance to see a Dio live by the way oh yeah 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 many many times um, the thing that's unfortunate is I got really really into Dio kind of towards the end so all those times I saw him I was like oh cool he did that Holy Diver song and uh, I couldn't really appreciate the music that I love now. And if I could go back and see it, I would lose my mind. Right. It's like, you know, what I'm into now. But um, I have a bunch of live DVDs, which is rad. And, sure. You know, I get that. But it's yeah. just a bummer I wasn't as into it then as I am now. So a lot of missed opportunities. Totally. Like I never attempted to do a photo shoot with him. And I easily could have if I tried. Uh Man, yeah, legend, legend. I, I really wanted to see Heaven and Hell. I had the chance to, and I passed it up. Worst decision I, I ever. I got to see them three times, and it's like, man, D, and Dio and Sabbath together. Oh, right. my God. So right. Good. Three times. You had to say three times. It hurts my heart, man. <laughs> <It> hurts me. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, okay, back to this. Uh, back to the Fast 8. Pinhead or Leatherface? Oh, Pinhead. Yes, win. Right there. Totally. All right. right. Oh, I, hey, because, really? Uh, nice. Look no, at this. I can't twist my arm. Yeah, I got you. Oh, we got it. Yeah, nice. All yeah, right. And that's definitely my favorite, and Doug Bradley's actually a really, really awesome person. His uh, profile photo on Facebook right now is a photo I took of him. Awesome. Yeah, I knew, I knew that cool. you took that sh- uh, a shot of him. Uh, I saw on your Instagram. I mean, it, with the puzzle box. Yeah, yeah. I, I got it because I knew I was doing a shoot with him. And I thought it would be really cool because I did, uh, you know, Robert England with the glove totally. and uh, Danny with the machete. And, you know, I want to kind of make it an ongoing series. Right. So I'll see who I'm going to do shoots with in October and maybe get a couple props. It might be tough to bring a chainsaw in there. But All right. <laughs> well, and you did Derek Mears too, right? Yeah, I did him with the glove, uh, with the glove, with the, uh, with the, the mask. Jason mask, which yeah. was awesome. Awesome. Did it's you ever, have you, have you worked it's with Kane? Fun. Have you worked with Kane Hodder? Yep. <sighs> I mean, you're killing me. Look at me. I'm like, I'm like all up on my microphone, like <laughs> leaning into this. I'm so into it right now. You have no idea. <laughs> yeah, no, Kane's a good dude. He's a very, very, very good dude. Awesome. Gosh, so amazing. I'm so jealous. All right, one piece of advice you wish you could give your 18-year-old self. Oh, my God. I'd probably tell myself to take more risks and take more chances and not abide by the rules. Um, for example, I was on OzFest 2006, the entire tour. Awesome. And I just shot the bands I was supposed to shoot, and I never tried to shoot the bands I wasn't supposed to shoot. Or, well, not wasn't supposed to shoot, but, you know, I, these are the bands I'm hired to shoot. Cool. Right. So the bands I'm not hired to shoot, System of a Down, Disturbed, and um, Black Sabbath, Ozzy. No, it was just Ozzy. It wasn't Sabbath. I never, like, tried to shoot and Disturbed. I shot a bunch. Sure. System of a Down, you know, I've shot them, but I've never gotten to shoot Ozzy. Wow. And if I asked, I'm sure I would have been able to, but I didn't even ask because I was like, eh, I just don't want to create waves. So right. definitely to take more chances and to, yeah, well, take more chances. Again, you right. know, lots of lost opportunities because you never know when you're going to get the chance to do something or when that opportunity will no longer exist. Totally. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, you still got time. You can head to Birmingham for the last, the end shows, last Sabbath shows. You got time. Traditionally, photographers are not allowed to photograph Ozzy or Black Sabbath unless you work for a daily newspaper. Oh, better get hired. Yeah, there you go. Right? Man. I mean, I'm going to try all I can for, uh, for the end tour. I already got my tickets, but... Nice. What, one, one of the I things mean, Honestly, that... what I did is I, there's a new camera coming out called the light camera. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's, it's like this big and it has 16 lenses in it and it's Whoa. revolutionary. It shoots with 
multiple lenses at a time, but it's the size of a cell phone. So I made sure I got tickets that were front and center with no one in front of me on the second tier for Black Sabbath. So if I can't shoot the show, I'm going to shoot the show, even if it's with my cell phone. I don't care. Awesome. Sure that. <laughs> That's the way to do it, man. I, I would totally go and try to get like get hired on at the Birmingham Daily News so I could just, just make it happen. Day. Yeah, just for the day. <laughs> quit quit the following day after you get well, your Sabbath I, photos. I would fly out for that. Totally. What were you going to say? Did you I was just going to say, you know, Simon, Simon and I, we figured out early on, you know, if you don't ever ask the question, the answer is always no. It's Indeed. always no if you don't ask. So right. it doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, totally. absolutely. All right, last question of the night. You ready for it? Mm-hmm. All right. Where can people find out what you're up to and what's next for Jeremy Saffer? Where can people find out what I'm up to? Yeah. News, updates, et cetera, et cetera. I assume jeremysaffer.com. Um, mostly my social networks. Yeah. My website isn't really updated too often because it's just photos. But um, my Twitter, my Instagram, and my Facebook are updated multiple times a day between you know professional things, my clothing line, and all the soaps I'm making, whatever. You know, even personal stuff on there. But that's definitely the best. Very nice my- clothing line and soaps. Do you want to throw a little something in about that? What what's going on with those? <laughs> if I if I can keep you for a couple of minutes longer to let you plug that, I'm curious. Oh, I'm, uh, during the winter, I needed something to kind of get my mind off a lot of things, and I learned how to make soap. And so I kind of went crazy and made a bunch of different types of soaps. They're all Halloween and horror-type soaps. Um, I even made a new one today, which is uh, a coffin with a skeleton in it with a cover, which is pretty cool. Three-piece <laughs> decorative soap. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's all horror-based. I have a coffin-shaped one I just did. Um, and it's all part of the clothing line, which is 1031, which is, you know, Halloween. And all the T-shirts are Halloween, horror-based, you know, just what I'm into. And there's something I did with uh, Angelo, who used to be in Motionless and White. Oh, I kind of yeah. have him designing these crazy ideas I come up with, and he's amazing. So, yeah, it's, it's just for fun. It's basically, I want this T-shirt to exist so I can wear it, and I can print 36 of them so if I lose weight... Or gain weight. <laughs> I have like, a ton of them. I buy them. Awesome. Thinking ahead, man. I like it. You know what? If you make some like straight up Fight Club uh, soap, where you get like I do. it's on you that. get like old, you get like what? fat ladies. Like you, like you, you mean the you fight? Get, what? You get you have to get the body fat from ladies that oh. you oh. have to sell their fat back <laughs> oh. to their ass. Like I don't know how did they phrase that in Fight Club, where he he was stealing the fat from a medical clinic that was suctioning liposuction. Lipo, yeah, liposuction. Yeah. Did you watch Fight Club? Is that why you got all excited about soap? Well, no, no, no. no. I just got excited because I saw – I basically saw a video on the internet of someone putting a little cupcake toy into soap. And I'm like, yo, I could put bats into soap. I could put (laughs) – soap. I need to learn how to do it. And I found out how easy it was. It's like, oh, I can do that. And, you know, the first batch was rough. The second batch was good. And then – Everything after that's been better. <laughs> awesome, nice. man. Yeah, I do have the Fight Club bar as well. <laughs> oh, See, that's there you go. Sweet. There you go. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, also, another quote from, yo, I can put bats into soap. <laughs> another quote of, the, of the, like, the week. That's so great. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, man, why are you smiling? I can put bats into soap. Yeah, that's a win, man. Holy crap. <laughs> Serious. That, that was one of my favorites. Nice. I'm I'm totally checking it out. And that was 1031. Is that like 1031.com? Can I get, get it through your website? Um, you can get it. If you go to my store, there's a link to it. Okay. But it's also uh, spelled out 1031inc.com or 10x, like the number 10, 10x31.com as well. Okay. Awesome. I, you'll, you or your peeps will certainly see an order coming through for this guy (laughs) soon. (laughs) Awesome. And we'll put a link to this in the show notes, right? Yeah, I'll definitely do that. I'll throw I'll throw it in. We'll we'll hook it up on YouTube when that goes out and uh, on my blog, etc. Super tight. Oh, and I'll have a a ten percent off code for it. So that's right. The Well Razor ten, right? Is that that's what we're yep. going with? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, just Well Razor and the number ten one zero, and it's ten percent off their entire order. 
That awesome. kicks all forms of ass. Yeah, that's fantastic. Show. Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah, that rules. Very cool. Well, we we will let you go, but seriously, thank you a ton for hanging out with us for like an hour and 15 minutes and talking all forms of awesome stuff. We seriously appreciate it. Yeah, and we and we seriously appreciate your art form too. Pretty amazing stuff. Hell yes. Yeah, thank love you your photos much. and if there's ever a time where I can uh come to the East Coast and I don't know, like stalk you for a while and you can show me how to use my camera. Make bat, I'm make down with that soap. too. Yeah, make some bat <laughs> soap. You know what? That's there. We go. We, we we may have just officially invited ourselves to come out and work for you for like a weekend to do help with photography, make soap, and do awesome stuff. Yeah, how would you like that? That'd be awesome. Uh, I was waiting for him to say that would be completely creepy. And goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just let me know when. <laughs> oh man, that rules. Very Thank nice you idea. so much, sir. You have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Yeah, Pleasure. Take care, Take man. Care. See ya. All right. Can I can I say real quick? This is this is what I was amazed about. One was how fucking humble that guy was. Totally. He takes amazing photos of amazing people, uh, amazing actors in amazing genres, and he's like, yeah. I take photos. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of what I do. I don't know what you know? I don't know what everybody's geeking out about. I mean, anybody can take photos. I don't know what's special about him. I see this, yeah, this transitional with <laughs> these people, and he's just kind of like, yeah, I, I don't I don't know what that what that is. And I was like, okay, all right, right, yeah. You know? Before we're like, it's like he's capturing their entire soul. Yeah, it was and so like, intense. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Meh. Uh, I, yeah. Sometimes it happens in an alley. We don't really play in it. I just set up this like eighteen, uh, one light, eighteen cornered box, and it kicks ass for me, and we're good. Like, yeah. it's like, oh my god. Well, he's obviously he has a, he has a touch. He knows that he has yeah. his style that works for him. He might not necessarily know what it is that does that, but it's working for him, and he enjoys it. Does it matter? So. I, I actually really, pre- I mean, from a guy who would like to start taking more photographs i enjoy, i actually appreciated the fact that when i posed that question to him about here's five grand what would you get because i've watched a lot of <clears throat> youtube videos where they say here's a th- here's a thousand dollars this is what you would this is what you should get here's five thousand this is what you should get what i appreciated was him saying it all depends on what you want to do there is no magic bullet. There right. is no set thing that you need to go spend your money on. Like for us, we have green screens. Uh, we've made some. We have some light. We have different, a bunch of different lighting kits. But where are we shooting? It's right. like it's like yeah. we. I was focused on equipment first, and then where can we do this stuff with the equipment that we have? Whereas his focus is more on, dude. Just get any camera. Get whatever you need to get. And just take pictures and over and over and over. I wonder how many thousands of dollars that would have saved us. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. He starts with the end objective in mind instead of, you know, the, well, the that's budget. Well, that's not the yeah. norm. It's not the norm to say, hey, just grab five disposable cameras and go do something. Mm-hmm. It's more of like, oh, wait a second. I want to go do this, so I need to get the best camera I can afford. Uh, well, if I do that, I might need to get this one thing that makes me have like a cool shot. If I have this lens, then maybe I can have that that depth of field that I want. I mean, you start extrapolating it to a point where you're like going, "Oh, I'm going to have a you know two backpacks on that are just full of stuff right. that I don't necessarily need." Because the guy started out with disposable cameras, right. so I mean, it really says yeah. something to that. And but, and he does have some YouTube videos. He has one YouTube video in particular where he shows the gear that he's going to take with him on a trip. And it, and it basically consists of three bags. And one bag is just a battery to wow. power the lights. Oh, right. Wow. That's so you don't have to worry about plugins. You just say you're carrying your energy with you, kind of thing. Right. Oh, wow. right. That's, Which would make sense. I mean, crazy. if he's in a that's back so cool. alley or, or, you know, no generator out in the middle of a field at like Download Festival. You just drop is, stuff and just plug it in and right? go, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Drop so, stuff. <laughs> Drops. <laughs> Drops. That's hilarious. <laughs> what do you mean? What, what else are you going to do? You're going to drop I, your bags on the ground. You're going to get things plugged right, in. No, you're going to go. It, yeah. Got okay. It. Yeah. We were thinking something else. Yeah. Joshua and I are just kind of in a silly mood. Yeah. Right. Oh, absolutely. You guys have been giggling and laughing and crying quite a bit. It's true. I just wish I enjoyed you. Yeah, we just, just wish we had bit. fun here. Even a little right. bit. Even a tiny bit if we had I, fun. I found great. out today that that is not what you tell a man in the bathroom. It's it's true. <laughs> yeah, the backstory is saying, I really enjoy you. 
I'm spending time with you. You can't. While one is in the restroom. I did not say it like I was getting ready to shoot a porn. I, <laughs> What's know, that? You know, I really enjoy you. <laughs> You're right. You did. It yeah, was more that like. Was, that's super gross. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So, moving on, uh, <laughs> I'm starting to notice another theme with our shows. What is that? Shane getting awkward <laughs> about, about things. Yeah. So. I anyway. have old man you know glasses. What? You know what, though? He, awkward for sure. He has some damn good questions, though. He, he does. Best, interview, best interviewer on this uh, I think so, at show. this table, for oh, yeah. sure. Thanks. Absolutely. Thanks, Absolutely. Yep, I think You're so. making me blush. Definitely. I, I said that at the table, like, during the show, not in the restroom. Right. Just so Don't do an interview right. in the restroom. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Or give compliments in a restroom. Right. That's probably more... Or talk. <laughs> or talk. Yeah. Or just, you don't, know, just be quiet. Right. Yeah, guys don't need to talk. In yeah, the for sure. If there's anything to take away from this show... <laughs> Zip it in the restroom <laughs> with the lippets. That's the way to do it. All right, so uh, that's it. Sai, yeah, what, what do you is. got going What's on? What do, you, what do you need to talk about? Go to tpsmedia.com. That's what I'm going to say. And on there, you can where? see. Go where? tpsmedia.co. There you go. Oh. Stop oh. being a baby. And if you go on there, you can see that we offer podcasts, we offer uh, lots of opportunities for um, having your own show. For uh, TPS Media, uh, you can follow us on I- Stitcher and iTunes. Uh, download this bunch of podcasts on there: Bandwagon, CVO Gun Talk, uh, lots of fun things to listen to. Wow, I, I, I almost want to slip my wrist. Oh, yeah. oh I'm trying cold. with the, I'm going with the horror thing. So should I have been like screaming, yelling, and been. Yeah, I was nervous. gonna do like a demon voice in there, but we all have headphones on. I didn't want to blow anybody's ears. Yeah, yeah would have hurt. Slash and <laughs> is that it? Is that how I need to introduce you? Know, that's you know what? You have your special right, little right. intro thing. Do I don't 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 break it out too early. Don't All break right. it out too early. Uh, you know what, Joshua? What do you got going on, sir? You know, um, pretty usual. If you want to check out uh, other episodes of Well Razor Radio, check out joshuacoburn.com slash blog or uh, the Well Razor Society or Well Razor Radio at joshuacoburn.com. If you are out there struggling and having issues, the Relief and Resource Center as well. At uh, JoshuaCoburn.com is uh, where to go. So basically, what I'm saying is JoshuaCoburn.com. Plug, plug, plug again. So, <laughs> and yeah. if if somebody wanted to uh, submit some questions for us to maybe right bring on. up on the air and mm-hmm. talk about, and yeah, if get... there's any like legit, completely random question that you might have, maybe you're struggling with something, we'll introduce it to whomever we're speaking to, and maybe see if we can find a solution. Maybe change up the show a little bit and. Uh, and try it out. See what advice, you know, we're, we're, none of us uh, maybe have the answer, but someone else may. So posing right. it might be uh, a cool thing to do, which you can also do on uh, joshuacoburn.com under the Well Razor uh, Society link. So check it out. Perfect. You, sir? Uh, you know what? It's just the uh, tpsmedia.co. Go there, and we're going to be doing audiobook recordings and uh, bringing in a bunch of talent and uh, creating a lot of content on tpsmedia.co. That's what we're going to be doing. And we're going to be having a lot more shows right here with Wall Razor Radio. Heck right? yeah, we are. Absolutely. Oh, if you'd like to... So excited. Yeah, I love be. this. I love talking to people and meeting people and like bringing some... Like You look at that, you look at Jeremy's stuff and you're like, oh. Right. Right? He's pretty much God and then floating you meet, here. Right. Clouds, and then you meet, you meet him, you bring him into everybody's household and everybody's like, oh. He's just he's a, a guy. Really, he he's is a just really another cool, human being, right? Yeah, yeah, he's a really cool dude who invited us to come hang out with him on a weekend to help him yeah. out. And who, who, who wants us to let him know that what he does is art? Totally, I mean, that's, that's yeah. what it is. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm with you. I, I the opportunity to be here and meet these people, and, and many of them in genres that I have no idea about, right? And so, it's really a, a huge thing for me to be like. Wow, I don't know anything about what you do, but the photography that you did, even some of it, which is you know, didn't necessarily turn me on, but I thought, God, that's incredibly shot. I can't believe how you can pull this off. To be knowledged, you know, in, in that is pretty amazing. So, agreed, unbelievable. Like, and seriously, I'm I get to do this. Like, I get to sit with you guys and hang out, talk to amazing people, yeah. people I I super look up to. Like, I still have heroes, and I get to talk to them on this friggin' show. Serious. That happens. Yeah. But if you want to check out other ones, uh, again, iTunes, Stitcher, JoshuaCobern.com, uh, YouTube, and uh, we got more shows coming, so check it out. And again, here on Well Razor Radio, there is no judgment, just kindness. 
He Boom. nailed it. He did nail it. Take care, guys. Talk soon. Later. <laughs> <laughs>